Hello, everyone. Hope you are well on this Saturday morning. Massacre in Moscow. I will cover that a bit. There's some more breaking news about that. Also, Russia says they are in a state of war now. Interesting. And I'll talk about how we should prepare for some things as well. Also, I have a very good passage that I will share towards the end of the video that will resonate with you. Resonate for sure, especially these days, this day and time that we are in right now. We are in a spiritual battle like no other, maybe more than we have had in our lifetimes. But first, I have to share this. <clears throat> we were watching some TV last night and I was watching an interview online a while ago. This was on, from Fox News and it's the 50th anniversary of the starting of that show back in the 70s, Little House on the Prairie. And Mrs. Dog is one of Mrs. Dog's favorites. And so she was very interested in it. And I used to watch it too. I remember used to uh, watch it a good bit actually uh, with the family when I was growing up. Very good show. They don't make these shows like this anymore. They just don't. But anyway, they had an interview with the actress who played the part of Nellie, who was like the mean girl, the rival of... Um, Laura, Laura Ingalls character. And she has some very interesting insights into that show. She talked about, especially Michael Landon, who this guy passed away at the age of 54. But before that, he was um, he was into several different things. And uh, he, he really was in charge of this show. And she, the big thing that struck me, I mean, she talked about how he was a very good actor to where this is in the middle of the 70s where, you know, People smoked, they drank on the set, I mean, getting ready to film these shows <clears throat> and how she, it was impressive that from her perspective, especially as a, as a kid, that he would transform from this guy in the, in the 70s shirts and smoking uh, to transform from that into this father on Little House on the Prairie in a matter of minutes and do it very well. But uh, the biggest thing she said about it was, it's a very interesting um, interview. If you want to look it up, it's it's very, especially if you were into that show, it's a very cool interview. She, the lady is 62 years old now, but uh, her name is, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, here it is. Allison, Allison Arngrim, A-R-N-G-R-I-M. Played the part of Nellie Olson. It, it was a very good interview. Anyway, the biggest thing that struck me, though, from what she's, you know, her insight into the show, but especially about Michael Landon is she said at times when they were filming, Michael Landon would say this show is number one, going to be a success. And number two, people are going to be watching this show long for years from now, you know, long after we're gone. And they would other people, the actors and everybody on the set would just laugh at him like, nah, you know, you're crazy. No, we don't agree with you. But he was right. And it stood the test of time, just like he said it would. And I believe that's because they just don't make shows like this anymore. And it, it was a lot about family values, uh, morals, life lessons. And I think that's why it stood the test of time. And I believe he knew that at that time. So very interesting. I just had to share that. Oh, just had to share that. Anyway. Moscow, the, the, this this shooting in Moscow, y'all probably have heard about it by now, but yesterday, uh, this was on a Friday night at a concert hall. And you know, at a concert hall on a Friday night, what are you going to have? You're going to have mostly, of course, civilians and young, young people and probably young families, they said, were attending this. And terrorists burst in to this concert hall with automatic rifles and explosives and attacked the people. The last I've read is that the death toll is up to 115. At least that's what they're saying. Many wounded, including kids. <clears throat> now, I read somewhere, and I, I believe, you know, the Russians are notorious for kind of under-reporting casualties or, or something like this. So the, the, the number of the death toll could be, in reality, could be a lot higher than this. But now there's, right now, at least they're saying 115 Uh died from this so far. ISIS, the Islamic State, has claimed responsibility, which is interesting. 
And I've seen some videos that dispute that, that say, I've seen some opinions that say, yes, it probably was ISIS. I've seen some opinions that say it was Ukraine and the United States was behind it. I've seen other opinions that it could be a, uh, an inside, a, a something that the Russians did just so they could use that in some way uh, to blame somebody for something. I don't know. We, we may never really know. Now, I did, before I came on, I saw another update that said 11 men were, 11 people were arrested uh, there near Moscow and or in Russia, and including four that carried out this attack. So who knows? We, we may not really know for sure who was behind this. The big thing, I think, to take away from it is that, you know, this happened in Moscow. And, you know, are we next? Or is, is something like this going to happen? We know we have all these millions of people flowing in, especially military-aged young men, flowing in from out of the country and we've witnessed in video and, and, and people talking about it and all this, so many of them are flowing in here just single men. It's not like they're carrying families in tow. You know, so that that that's suspicious. And, and so with all the millions probably we know that are in here, is it just a matter of time before we see something like this perpetrated on our soil? And, and what will it be? Where will it be? Will it be a coordinated thing? Will it happen in several places at one time? So I would, at least I, Ms. Dog and I, we avoid large crowds. Now we've been doing that for a while, you know, but um, I would I would be careful. I would be very cautious about attending large events with a lot of people, especially in large cities. Um, we just typically avoid, lar avoid large crowds anyway. And so I would, I would really think hard about that. I would avoid them, uh, especially events that are indoors to where you have limited access to escape. Now, if it's outdoors, a little different, but still, you know, there've been shootings in these outdoor events, you know, before, but at least you have uh, more ways to get away and, and cover and, and run, you know, or fight back right? either way, you know. Um, so concerts, uh, things like that. I, I always worry about these big ball games where you got thousands and thousands of people packed in. I, I, I just cringe sometimes when I see these large crowds and I think that would be such a target, you know, but, um, but the, the, you know, these huge rock concerts and all this and gatherings, man, it, it, it's, I would, I would be careful about it. Um, Churches, okay. My intent, yeah, I've read an article a day or two ago that attacks on churches in the United States has more than doubled in the last year or so. Now, I'm not saying don't go to church, no, because church churches come in all sizes. And, uh, but I would say that if you go to any church that is of size, even some small ones. Do they have a security plan? Do they have something in place? You know, somebody watching, somebody uh, that's carrying tools. You know what I mean? Or you should, you know, or you carry tools. Not a bad idea. Should. Uh, but they do, do they have a plan like that? Uh, you know, the one we that we attend definitely has a plan and it's also visible. And I kind of like that, actually. Again. We are in a huge spiritual battle here, y'all. You know, when the attacks on churches are ramping up more than double, I think it was way more than double, actually. I don't remember the exact quote or the number, but just in the last year, think about that. Christian churches, especially Protestant ones, also Catholic, some Catholic churches as well. But that tells you something, that evil is, is running rampant more than ever right now. And it will continue to spiral up. We need to keep our situational awareness going, no matter what, even at church. Self-protection, think about that. Travel in groups of two or more, if at all possible. I know that's not always possible. Even parking. You know, we, we do the strategic parking when I can. If possible, I like to back into spaces. I prefer to park 
where I'm not wedged into a bunch of other vehicles, you know, where you can't really see or restrict your vision of everything around you, especially in these large parking lots. So I kind of like to park kind of out, you know, away from everything else a bit, you know, hey, walking, hey, walk, need to get more steps in anyway, you know. So think about those types of things as well. Also, I meant to mention this earlier, Russia says that they are quote unquote at war. At first they called this, these attacks on uh, Ukraine special military operations. You know, that's kind of what they've been calling it all this time, the last two years. But the, somebody from the, uh, I forget who it was, uh, from the Kremlin came out yesterday, I believe, said that we were calling us calling it a special military operations. But when the whole gang, he called it a quote unquote gang. Uh, what I mean by that, he said, is the West back back and they started backing Ukraine. It turned into a war for us and it is an all out war now. So interesting words there, the rhetoric. The saber rattling continues. The escalation continues there. We have, so we have that spot, Russia, Ukraine. We have the Middle East that just keeps ramping up. This is not reported that much. Uh, we also have the China, Taiwan thing that just keeps escalating and tensions keep rising. So you got several, and that's not the only spots in the world by any means, but those are the ones that, that get the most news. But three huge spots uh, in the world that are just keep escalating and keep and there's no talks, there's no diplomacy whatsoever mentioned or that we hear about in these situations. So it could take one little spark. It could take, a, you know, one escalation, one one era, you know, uh, a, a ship being sunk that, that, that creates a chain reaction of events from there that just escalate and escalate. So. Something we're keeping an eye on, not something to obsess about, you know, but something to keep an eye on because so many folks out there are not paying attention at all to this. And personally, yes, I, I, I turn my attention first to what's going on right here, especially with the, with the issues with the invasion. That's a whole nother video. Things that I'm hearing y'all I'm hearing from people, ranchers, just people out there, especially in Texas, but not just Texas, other states too, and what they're seeing and what they're experiencing, y'all, it'll make your stomach turn. I'm serious. Um, I'll do a video on that, but that is my first, that is what I'm putting more attention to as far as current events first, but keeping an eye, we can do both. Keep an eye on what's going on overseas, because if that thing blossoms out and gets crazier than what it is already, it will absolutely impact us, of course, in multiple ways here. That's what a lot of people here the, do not realize. And like I said, they will be totally shocked when it happens. And they'll be pissed because they're not ready. Right. OK, I've kind of droned on about that a bit. Thanks for bearing with me. I'm going to go to, this is a powerful passage, to say the least powerful. Probably heard it before, but I think it's one of those that just bears repeating at times because, as we know, sometimes when we, well, many times when we read scripture, many times we, we, we glean something different from it or something that we didn't before. So, the armor of God, Ephesians. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10. The armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Amen. Talk about some dark forces right now, y'all. We got that going on. Maybe more than ever. Full armor. 
take our stand against the devil schemes and whew, talk about scheming and deceiving false prophets all that we've seen all y'all is it in full full swing if it's not it's ramping up that way that's my opinion anyway share your thoughts on these things let's stay in prayer let's be careful let's be safe out there stay close to jesus god bless you i'll see you soon